All right, are we rolling? Okay, so I'm gonna do a second coat or a second fill of my roasted ash body guitar. Uh, yesterday I did a coat and there's the pictures that I'll add, you'll see there. And then it sanded off pretty easily. Took a little bit of time around the horns and stuff, so I may not get a ton in that area the second time just for ease of sanding, but you know, nothing major, maybe an hour's worth of work. So I'm gonna add some warm water to a scoop of that timber mate, and mine is fresh, so probably that was too much water. I'll have to add a little more timber mate, but even if it's not, you can scoop up anything you don't use, and even if it's dried up, which is always my frustration with regular putty, you can reconstitute uh, it with some warm water, and it's good as new. Anyway, we want to mix it up to where it gets to be about a I don't know, pudding or mayonnaise kind of consistency. This might actually be okay by the time I get it mixed up. Um, I'm gonna wear gloves. This stuff is non-toxic, so you don't have to. But I'm gonna wear gloves because I found, at least for doing the sides, and I think I'll do it everywhere, this second coat is, it was easier to just put it on my fingers and smear it in, and then wipe the excess off and also push a little more of the uh, timber made into the uh, grain with this sort of rubber, stiff rubber uh, spatula thing that I found in the automotive uh, section at Osh. Timber made I had to order online, but it was only like eight bucks and I'll give the rest to my buddy that's helping me finish this guitar. And, enough for a lifetime. You can zoom in on that product there, Grant. But anyway, I'm getting pretty close here, and I'm okay with the consistency. I think it'll spread. It's kind of a little like pudding. I think it's pretty good, actually. Just make sure I don't have any big chunks, and then we'll get to it. So as I said, I've already filled this once, and uh, it's pretty smooth to the touch, but there's still a little bit of the ridges that can be felt, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill it in one more time, and then we'll probably call it good after that. So, like I said, I think what I'm gonna do, just to make it easy, is I'm gonna put some on my fingers like that, and I'm gonna rub it in, and circular motion, just working into the grain. I don't think I really have to worry about going with the grain or anything while I'm rubbing it in. Like I said, I'm just kind of going in a swirling pattern. I retaped uh, over the binding when I get to the edges of the sides. I don't have to worry about it yet because when I sanded the sides, it came up a little bit, but put a little frog tape on it and that'll be good. Feral holes are still filled with some paper towel. I think with a little bit of work, we'll be able to scratch out the excess when we're done. So anyway, I'm just working this in and I'm pressing it down pretty good. Seeing whatever didn't get filled, hopefully gets filled this time. And again, in a second, when I get this covered, I may have to make up some more for the sides. This didn't really go as far as I thought. I'm gonna get it all in real good on the top here first. Maybe in here as well. With what I got left. Tummy cut. And again, I think it was probably fine after one coat, it's going on the back. I'm gonna stain it. Uh, with some medium brown dye that I'm gonna mix with something. Anyway, now I'm gonna get my squeegee and I'm gonna kinda push it into the grain a little bit. Maybe I'll get some of this back while I'm doing that. But anyway, I'll kinda go at a 45 degree angle, I think is what I saw, but mainly what I was trying to do the first time and I won't worry too much about it because I'll go quickly to it is 
make sure when I go to the outside that I'm going off and maybe come around with my hand and get any excess that might build up again. Having done the first coat, I know that I gotta actually slow down because I don't want to splash the stuff. I'm inside the house. My wife will not be pleased. Anyway, whatever I can get off with this, I won't have to sand off. And hopefully also in the process of scraping it, it's pushing whatever still needs to be filled into the grain. It does dry pretty quick, so I gotta kinda keep moving. And again, tend to whatever you know, with the sides. That might be good for the top. The other thing I gotta remember is I got a block of the ash that I'm gonna fill. I forgot in the first coat, but I wanna fill it so we can test the stain on it. And then the top of this guitar actually has some really nice spruce that uh, I got the uh, overcut of that we can practice with our nitro. I got some fender amber, neck amber tint that I think is gonna be the right color. I'm doing sort of a Martin D28 tribute guitar that's uh, inspired by one I saw at the NAMM show, made by Fred Stewart, one of Fender's founder builders, part of their founder series. It is beautiful. I'll put a picture up for you to see. So at any rate, I'll get a little fill on this one so the color will be, and the way it takes the stain will be comparable. I'll leave that at that. Now, um, I gotta do the sides, but I think I gotta mix a little bit more up. Which is probably okay. I'll just make sure there's no chunks said, especially in the horn area, these are a pain in the butt to sand out. You can do it with a little bit of work. Okay, so really quickly, let's see if we can get a little more of this going. I got another big scoop. Yeah, maybe by the time I'm done, I'm not going to have a whole lot for my buddy, but at least enough for one more probably, or certainly a neck fill. A little more water. That may not have been quite enough, but let's see. If you want to take a pause, we can cut back in when I get this mixed up. It didn't take too long, maybe about a minute or so, but I didn't want to bore you. And now I'm going to go around here, and uh, I'm not going to worry about getting a ton in here. Like I said, uh, I don't think you're going to see it. Ooh, almost got my shirt. Um, and it was a pain to sand out. So I'm just gonna put a little bit to say that I cared. I'm getting up over there. And when I did the first coat, I just kinda wiped it sloppily on. Well, actually, just the way I did the whole back, but the back I did with the spatula first, and then realized this technique on the sides and it was much easier. So I think I'm gonna stick with this. Anyway, now I'm just going around. Let me get it on. Like I said, I re-taped over the binding. I imagine at the end, I'll scrape that white part for whatever discoloration it has. I know the tape came off a little in the sanding. Nothing horrible. But, that'll clean it up. I actually have a really cool binding. I'll probably show you some pictures here as I tell you, but I put, uh, well, I had a local guy put some herringbone with a white uh, purfling on the outside. I guess if that's how you say it, but anyway, it's double binding and it's really cool. And bending that 
purfling is tough, but we, there was a video I found that I forwarded to him where they <coughs> cut the sort of the black plastic border for the herringbone. And if you do that, if you slice it off, then it bends like a shoelace and you can just glue the parts back together after you bend them into place, kind of cool. And uh, he said he did that and it worked like a charm. I think he said around the horns he cut it on both sides and in other places where he had less severe turns, he just cut it on one side. Um, anyway, he did a beautiful job. I was super pleased. I was thinking about doing that. Actually, this is the first guitar that I've done any work on myself. I got a buddy that has emboldened me by his successful guitar projects that he's done some of the work, so we've decided we're going to go for it and save a little money in the finishing process, which will be a significant savings. Um, plus, I think it's doable. I have some artistic abilities. Um, and like I said, so far it's just about getting this coated and then when it dries tomorrow, I, don't, I probably don't even have to wait that long, but I will. Um, I'll sand it off again real good and then I think we're going to call it good with the fill and then get on to the stain. Uh, let me see if I take this putty knife to it a little bit. I think I will. I don't think I did on the first coat, but this might just press it in a little bit if there's a few remaining low spots that sunk in overnight while it was drying. But again, I still feel a little bit of ridges, but nothing that my nail would catch, which I think before when I checked it, my nail caught a little bit. And again, I think it's, uh, if I'm doing it and saving myself the money, I've got the time, I might as well slap on a second coat and tomorrow I'll sand this baby off. And then on to the dyeing. I got a bunch of uh, products from Re-Ranch. It's like 80 bucks for everything, minus the Timbermaid, of course. But I got some uh, alcohol-based dye. It's actually just powder that I mixed with, mix with either uh, um, lacquer thinner or um, denatured alcohol. So I haven't decided what I'm going to mix it with yet. I'm going to do a little more research. I think either one of them will be a, about the same difference. And the uh, I think it's going to be a similar process uh, to this, except uh, instead of my hand, I'll use little t-shirt strips and probably wipe on the dye. And I got a medium brown instead of a dark red mahogany because the neck of this thing, maybe I can put a picture up there for you, is a little more brown. So I don't know, we're going to try to match the color. And I guess it's not a concern if it's not perfect, but we'll try to get close. Again, just trying to get some of this so it'll be a little bit easier to sand this part in here. Let's Kind of a pain in the butt this morning. Oops. Well, like I said, I'll scrape that binding and I'll go ahead and uh, re tape it before we do any staining just to make sure that the binding doesn't get too messed up. But again, I think you just get a razor and scrape a layer of that off. All right, so I'm just about done, I think. I think I've been all the way around. Back looks pretty good. I got a couple of big chunks. Okay.
this part was really easy, the flat part especially was easy to sand, and this is the focal point, so why not slap a little more in there. I suppose I could press a little bit harder just to give it a good college try here. But really, um, like I said, this is my first ever guitar project, and this uh, part so far is easy. And I think the staining, since it's white bomb, will be easy too. And then I'm going to make a little spray booth out of PVC and plastic tarps, and then start the slow process of uh, nitroing this baby. Uh, on the front and then clearing the entire thing. I'll put a little bit more on the block. One more straight. That ought to be good for a test piece. Anyway, I used most of that and I guess I still have a quarter of a thing so like I said probably enough for a good coat or a couple coats on a neck and like I said it was only eight bucks to begin with. This spatula, will, just with warm water, will come completely clean, so I'll throw that in the sink. And that's it. Take off my gloves, take that to the garage. Actually, I'll leave one glove on, but we'll check back in.